Question number seven. Okay, no picture, so I'm going to draw a nice picture here. So angle C is my 90 degree angle. And A and B are the two other angles. Uh, it says the sine of angle A is always equal to, all right. So the sine of angle A You want to know what that's always equal to. Well, let's see. So if I'm following my formula for sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'll write it this way. The sine of angle A is, in this picture, equal to CB over AB. Well, the sine of a equaling the sine of B, that would only happen if the A and B were both 45 degrees. We want the one that's always true. So now I'm off to maybe the second one. What is the cosine of B? Well, if I'm looking at angle B, and I want the cosine of it, the cosine of angle B is the adjacent side, which would be CB, over the hypotenuse, which is AB. So if I switch my vision from the yellow angle to the black angle, the opposite and the adjacent side change places. And that's why the cosine of B is equal to the sine of A. So that's a fact that whenever you've got complementary angles, whenever you have angles that add up to 90 degrees, the sine of one will equal the cosine of the other. And that's what's happening here in question 8. It says that the sine is equal to the cosine. So just as that happened over here, the sine is equal to the cosine only when the angles add up to make 90 degrees. So this fact right here is basically telling me in a quiet way that that one angle is e plus the other angle will altogether make 90 degrees. Now, this question can be done that way. Maybe the easiest way to do this is to put in these numbers to see which one would actually be true. All right, so that would be the easiest way to work on that question is just to plug these numbers in. But if you worked on it this other way, you would get 40 plus 2x equals 90. Subtract 40 from both sides, and you get 2x equals 50 divide by 2 and x equals 25. Of course, the easier way to do that is just to plug in the 25 and you could find out that the sine of 15 degrees is equal to the cosine of 75 degrees by just plugging it into the calculator. All right, question number 9 gets a little bit more advanced as we go. Finding the length of EY to the nearest integer. Uh, they're giving me a lot of information at the top, and one fact not to miss out on is that rectangle Metz is a re or shape Metz is a rectangle. Uh, because that's true, I know that these angles in white also have to be worth 90 degrees. And because of that, I can actually use some trigonometry or SOHCAHTOA maybe to figure out the missing information. So let's begin with um, figuring out EY to the nearest integer. All right. Well, to figure out what EY is, I'm going to have to figure out what ET is. And I'm also going to have to figure out what TY is and add them together. Well, let's get TY first. And that right triangle right there, I'm looking for the adjacent side. And I've got the hypotenuse. So I can use cosine to figure that out. The cosine of 38 degrees is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So cross multiplying there will give me the answer. So x is equal to 20 times the cosine of 38. So about 15.76. 
and that would be this piece right here, about 15.76. All right, to find to find ET, um, I have to notice that it is, a, it is in a rectangle, and ET and MS are the same. So if I find MS, I would know what ET is. So to find MS, noticing that it's in this triangle, that I've got the opposite side that I'm after, and they're giving me in the picture the adjacent side. So I'd have to use TOA to figure out what MS is. So it would be a tangent of 52 equals opposite over adjacent. I'm going to take that equation and cross multiply and get 36 times the tangent of 52 which is about 46.08. So keeping track of what I just found out, I know that these pieces both are 46.08. Okay, rounding to the nearest integer, adding these two together, So e to y would be 46.08 plus 15.76, which is about 62. All right, so finding en. First of all, I'll have to find it in the picture. Okay, to find en, it uh, looks like I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure that out. Because to find out how far it is from E to N, I've got the 36 so far. I just need to find out this missing piece right here from M to E. Now, M to E is the same as T to S. And in this area here, I can use Pythagorean theorem to find out how far it is from S to T. Or I could use trigonometry, but I'll just work on something that is probably easier to do, which would be Pythagorean theorem. So 15.76 squared plus, if I want to call that something, I can call it x again, is equal to 20 squared. And then just typing it into the calculator, 400 minus 15.76 squared gives me about 151. For x squared. Okay, which brings us to a square root that will tell us what x is worth. Twelve point three one. And then finishing the question. So this is 12.31. So this is 12.31 from E to M. So altogether, E to N would be 36 plus 12.31, which is very close to 48. It says find the area of triangle NE. We'll have to use the area formula, half base times height. Those are my first two answers. And then half base times height, well, the base of triangle NE could be EN, which is my first answer, or my one answer, 48. So one half of 48 times the height, which would be the other side, 62. Yeah, so it's one half of my two answers multiplied together from the first two parts, which brings me to 1488 for the area.